okay so for answering the question how to um, let's say integrate uh, API calls in a React application we should first understand a bit more the life cycle of components uh, in our um, in our uh, application so <laughs> the subtitle here is what happens before and after the rendering okay the rendering of the J uh, JavaScript uh, of the JSX uh, uh, code of, the, of our component so basically all react uh, does is focused on on the render uh, mechanism okay calling the functions uh, uh, re-rendering the JSX uh, in a recursive way and so on okay uh, but it's not uh, uh, the only action that it does uh, because components uh, when we are rendering something components appear and disappear some part of the page are constructed some are destroyed and so on huh? so basically every component uh, follows this very simple uh, life cycle so imagine you are putting a button or a table or a form or whatever the first time you render this component the first time the component is mounted so is created and inserted into the DOM into the virtual DOM which is then okay, of course uh, transformed the real DOM these operations only happen the operation only happens once okay when the component is first created and all this state is initialized and so on then while the component is shown on the screen it may be updated many many times the component will be updated every time its state changes as a consequence maybe of some event tenders in the component itself or in some child component that has the state modification function or because the props change for, to that component change so when I change a prop to a component uh, this component is updated is the same object it's a retained state but uh, it's updated because the uh, so the function is, re is recomputed you re updated and the rendering is recomputed and so on uh, is still the same component that goes through upda an update cycle and there may come a time when the component is not needed anymore in the screen so the we are changing the router, we are changing some variable, some state, and that component is no longer displayed, it's no longer rendered. So the father component that was rendering that component uh, uh, now is rendering something else. And at that point, this component is uh, unmounted, destroyed. Okay. If uh, one moment later the same component is displayed in the same place, so uh, it will be a new component so once a component is unmounted uh, there is no recovery from that if the same element appears in the same place it will be it, it will be a different component which is created and mounted from scratch so there's no uh, coming back from this line mounting once updating zero or more times uh, as much as you want and then finally unmounting at most one after a mounted the component this specific component uh, is not available anymore so any information associated with that component is lost uh, we can always recreate another one of course mount a new one you remember this was one of the tricks that we used for initializing the form I made the form disappear and then reappear again so that we are enforcing to, to create and mount a new component okay but it was just a say a trick now we are ready to uh, uh, let's say um, understand better the cycle and add some uh, operations that can be done can be done in some part of the cycle uh, this picture shows uh, different operations that happen to the component in these three different phases mounting updating and unmounting and it shows uh, the hooks uh, that can be used for controlling what happens to these components in the different phases okay uh, for, we already know that uh, use state uh, or use context uh, trigger the updating phase 
start uh, the updating starts from a call of the use state or for the change of the properties while the mounting of the component uh, is started from the first call of the function itself the first time we call, we call the function we need to create a component we return something that will create uh, this component hmm? uh, these are the so-called uh, render phase the render phase is the phase where react is running the functions this function should behave as pure functions and should return each function should return its own render tree that portion of the execution so basically the, the body the real body of the function itself uh, and the return expression should not have any side effect it should not be stopped it should not be blocked it's just a as we already said many times, uh, a, a pure function computation starting from the props uh, that are immutable. We are think we need, we need to think of, uh, as constant, and the state uh, which is to be imagined as a, as an immut immutable constant. Starting from props and state, I render. That's it. Nothing strange may happen in between. Then after the rendering, <coughs> so basically building a virtual DOM uh, up react will uh, compute all the differences uh, and update the real DOM this is called the commit phase after the DOM is updated uh, the browser has the new page available so usually we can fire event handler when the user clicks here and there and types here and there event handlers can fire these event handlers are outside the, the component lifecycle. They just happen as asynchronous functions. And the um, result of executing an event handler usually is to change the state. Hmm? Although at, this, at that point, uh, when an event handler calls a set state uh, function, it will re-trigger a rendering and then uh, an update uh, and commit of the of the new version today we are going to learn this add new hook uh, which is called use effect uh, that can be used uh, after the rendering phase and during the commit phase in this commit phase we can we have the dom available events can fire and asynchronous operations can be executed what in general react calls uh, side effects use effect uh, is a hook for handling side effects uh, to a component side effects is everything that should be avoided in a functional component so external inf external information coming in or internal information going out uh, or uh, opening or registering a resource uh, or anything that goes outside the pure execution of a component is a side effect something that breaks the from input to output functional behavior and of course in part even a simple console.log in theory is a side effect it's something that takes some information from the function and put it somewhere somewhere else outside of a component outside of the return uh, instruction okay we use that for debugging and that's okay and uh, so all the uh, of course calling external apis is a side effect huh? so the definition here that i took from the documentation is a, a side effect is any calculation that doesn't target the output values that we've not used for computing the output anything that affects something outside the scope of the function component being executed and right now we are interested for example in data fetching but also logging uh, or subscribing opening resources and so on all of these uh, are to be uh, considered as side effects. Uh, which, what is not side effects uh, is uh, rendering and state, update, uh, state updates uh, and props updates. Those properties, state uh, and rendering, are part of the functional part. Okay, so we can we know how to use them. We can register event handler, change the state, and so on. Um, so let's keep in mind that rendering is something functional and automatic. 
side effects uh, is something non-functional and is controlled by us and they should be really disjoint you cannot apply side effects while you're rendering or you cannot aff affect the rendering from a side effect they run in separate let's say in separate parts of the brain of course they can interact uh, through the state so a side effect can update the state and this type of update of course will trigger a render okay it's a mistake to perform a side effect directly in the body of the component uh, that's the reason why we said we don't want to call we can call uh, add, so the read exam uh, um, function from inside the component okay even because we, we said many times we have no control over how many times the component is called and is rendered maybe rendered many times but this would be incorrect to call an api many times when only one suffices uh, so we we must uh, control that so in the render phase we don't want any side effects uh, and all the side effects should be in the commit phase uh, and actually use effect is uh, the function that we use to, to manage that and you see that use effect uh, can run in the mount in the update and the in the unmount phases they are different there are different executions probably we have something different to do when we are first mounting the component uh, from where of course we are unmounting it or when we are just updating that so the same hook user factor has a quite complex interface uh, because it needs to be able to handle any type of side effect uh, in the three different phases of the life cycle And of course, uh, we don't want uh, to run side effects at every render, every, at every commit, so after every render. Okay, it would be wrong to, for example, load the list of exams every time the, the, table, the table component is being rendered. Because maybe we are rendering it for other reasons, so maybe to show or to hide the button, and we don't want to reload the data every time. So only when some specific condition is met. So let's meet uh, this uh, user effect hook, uh, how it works. Uh, um, the idea is uh, whenever you have something that is considered a side effect, uh, here I made the, the extreme example of a, just a simple console.log, we never know when when this is executed hmm? uh, by the way in uh, just that you know in um, development mode whenever reacts uh, react wants to render a component it always renders it twice maybe you already mentioned that in the past so actually when you are developing when you have data component this rendering function is called twice and then react will compare the output the return and uh, if they don't match it will you it will give you a warning uh, beware you are not being functional okay what this means that if you have a console.log inside uh, the same measure the same message should be printed twice we don't see it twice uh, because react is filtered in the console it's hiding the second one but actually it's there if you do something else which is not just, just a plain console.log uh, so the console that we are using is not the real console object, but it's something that React is, is filtering. So it's hiding a bit uh, of, of the trick, okay? But the reality is that uh, in development mode, uh, the, for example, the number of rendering of a component in development mode is different from the number of rendering in the production mode. Because in production, it optimizes the number of rendering, and uh, in, in development, it's trying to help us check the error. So if we don't follow the rules, the functional rules, uh, we are sure that the production application will behave differently from what we debugged before. Mm -hmm. So let's try to stick with the rules. And the idea is that if you want to uh, write something, put that into the user effect hook. The, here it's safe because it's guaranteed to be executed only once when everything is, has been computed so where all the state is uh, steady and well all the components uh, are rendered 
and can be executed only once in the commit phase instead of the many render phases that are not controllable, okay? Not controlled by us, of course, they're controlled by, by React. So how does it work? The user effect has may, well, we'll have two parameters, okay? So the hook is called user effect, has two parameters. The one, the first one is a function, a callback, this callback will contain the code that we want to execute, the code that will have side effects. And the second is an array of dependencies that is used to determine when the hook needs to be called. So what, a callback, when, when some of the dependencies change. So actually, use effect will observe any change to the value of any of the dependencies and will run the callback when some of them changes. Okay? Um, the callback, it, we write user effect uh, in the code of the function, but we know that the function is not, uh, the, the real effect is not executed right now in that place. It will be executed after the return statement. Let's just imagine like that. We return the code and then we execute the, the effect when the code has, has already been rendered. So the callback cannot affect in any way the rendering of the component, if you write it before. Hmm? Uh, if of course, it can change the state so that it will affect the, the rendering of the next uh, render cycle of the component. Uh, and the dependency is just a set of variables, a set of objects, uh, simple variables, objects, uh, arrays, and so on, where uh, React is checking at, at the commit phase whether any of these uh, change their value from the previous, from the previous iteration. Mm -hmm. The dependency array is where most of the bugs uh, in the user effects uh, lie. Mm -hmm. Because, um, yeah, I call it a, a, a dense API because you're really, there are a lot of special cases. So the second parameter, the dependency array, may be in, in three different ways. First, uh, it may be missing. If I don't provide a second parameter, the effect uh, runs always, the callback of the user effect runs off at every rendering. I'm not checking any dependencies, so any time I render the component uh, in the commit phase, I run the user effect. Uh, the opposite is I, if I specify a, an empty list uh, of dependencies. And so the effect is never run because there are no variables that may change to cause the execution of the effect. It's never run except at mount time. The initial, when we initially mount the component here, even if the list of dependencies is empty, the effect is still run once. If there are no dependencies listed, uh, when we update the component, uh, the effect is not run again. So this is good for managing operations that should be done at mount time, when we first mount a component. And, ju and just once, we don't need to repeat the operations more than once. The third value is the normal value, the normal case, where the effect is being run when the component is run, uh, sorry, is rendered, is uh, mounted for the first time, and when the component is re-rendered, is updated, and only if uh, some of the dependencies are changed. And what, what can I put into the dependencies? Well, I put any JavaScript expression that usually depends on props and states. We cannot monitor something else. We can monitor just the input values. We are still inside of a function, okay? The callback is non-functional, doesn't need to be functional. But this line 
here is still in the body of the function so the only information we have access to for listing the dependencies are props and states nothing else so these are just okay simple code fragments uh, um, this effect without the second parameter runs after re every rendering is not so useful these days hmm? uh, this can be useful because it runs once you see that a very small difference we have the array the empty array or we don't have the array changes completely the meaning of the of the effect that's why and this is the normal case where we set one or more properties one or more stage variables but it always runs at the initial rendering so at component mount time, when the component is mounted, all the effects are run once. And then it depends. It depends on the dependency, on the dependency array. Um, so imagine we have uh, a simple component uh, that uh, shows a number, okay? A count component with a property number. And uh, that renders uh, a button for increasing the number. Okay, no? it's very simple. And this is the body of the function where we register two effects. The first effect has no dependency list, and the second effect has one dependency, which is a prop, one of the property of this component number. Okay, so what happens here? Here I try to capture the, the log of this. Um, this log is printing my static number or my dynamic number. And while the user is pressing the plus button sometimes what you see is that the first hook my static number is three is only printed once at the beginning with the initial value of the prop that was given by by the father component while the second uh, callback is executed at the same time so at mount time so the first two are executed are both executed at mounting time and the others only execute the second one every time the number changes. At every change of the number, I execute this code here, this callback here. And this, this um, number is changed because uh, we are increasing a given state number. So there's a father component that increases in a state. This state is passed as a property to the, comp to the to count. Count feels a change to its props. It will re-render, so the interface will change. The display number will change. And props.number changed, and therefore the effect will be called again. Okay? So we'll print every time this number changes. Um, so the, the actual you know, sequence of operation is the component count is created with the parameter number equal to three and is mounted. So we are at mount time. Render and commit phases. In the render phase, uh, we call the function count, we return, we save the return value and we render its contents. So in the first execution of this function, the effect will be to return a div with three inside. In the meantime, we execute this use effects uh, that only register these callbacks. They don't execute them. Okay? The user effect code is not executed here. It's, it's just the user effect function will just okay, create the new hook and set it aside. Then it will render. So 
execute the return statement, the JSX is returned with the number true. Now we are in the commit phase. In the commit phase, we have a look at the, at the effects that need to be run. This is the first render, so we will run all the effects. We run this code, we run this code. And this completes the cycle. Then if the user clicks uh, on the button here, uh, the state uh, is increased in the father component, so it's not, we are not, not, not observing that. But the father component at this number, which is a state in the father component, and this state is used as a prop to count. So count feels, uh, or react, uh, feels the change in the property. And so re-executes the, the component. It will execute the fu function again. This time, number is four. And first, uh, render, then commit. First, it will render a div with four inside. And after that, so four will be in on the screen. After that, it will check whether some effects need to be running. So uh, number has changed. This effect depends on number, therefore it's being executed. Number is not on this list, so this is not executed. So it will start from what change and we look for which are the hooks uh, that are say sensitive to that change. Okay. Um, And of course, uh, doing something in a side of doing, here we are doing a console.log. Console.log cannot affect uh, the, <laughs> the evolution of, the, of our application. If we want to affect the evolution of our application, we should, in the side effect, have a way of uh, interacting with the state. So of course, uh, we can call set state from inside an effect, from inside the side effect. And we can have a state that will trigger the effect. So this, uh, there's a two-way relationship between state and effect. State may be part of the dependency array. And so whenever state changes, the effect is run. And state may be changed from inside an effect. So whenever the, st the effect runs, uh, the, the state may be changed. Just be aware of, of infinite loops, okay? Where you change the state, it will run the effect, the effect will change the state again, that will run the effect again, and so on. We see, we see. So, but there are these two directions. Whenever the state changes, the effect, if it's listed in the dependency, is run. If the state is updated, so this uh, is sensitive to the change of the state, not to the update of the state. It's a fine distinction, but if you call set, uh, set state, uh, and the new value is identical to the, to the previous one, which is allowed, it will not run the effect. So it's not the updating of the state, but the change of the state that will trigger. Hmm? That can be a problem if we want to force in some way the execution of the trigger, we should uh, change the state uh, to a value that is different from the current one, okay? But is one of the many, say, tricks or problems that we are going to study next week. And uh, in the effect, you can use the, the set state. Just remember that the state will be actually modified after. After, your ref after all the effects have, have been run. If inside an, eff an effect callback you change the state, React will just the state changes when the commit phase is over we'll apply the state changes and according to the new states it we it will start a new render phase because if states have changed uh, some components need to be re-rendered okay so in a way from a side effect you can indirectly trigger a new re-render so you cannot affect the current rendering because it already happened but you can force or ask <laughs> to 
for a new rendering if you are changing some state. Hmm? So this is another example. Uh, it's a gate that may be open or closed. Okay, imagine some, some part of the page that it can be open or closed. Okay, and this um, portion will stay open for a small amount of time. Only half a second, 500 milliseconds. So it's something that you can click, it will open, and uh, uh, after 500 milliseconds it will close it automatically uh, by itself. So, uh, how does it work? You have a uh, we have a div, uh, div that may be open or closed, and if, if it's open, it will display go, and if it's closed, it will be displaying stop. Okay. Um, open is a state, a simple Boolean state. So initially, the gate is closed. First execution of the function, uh, the state is initialized to false uh, and the rendering will generate uh, open yes a stop sign and of course on this stop sign we'll have the on the event tender open so we have two functions here one is the effect and the other is the event tender neither of these function is executed at the run of the component they are just rendered uh, they're just uh, recorded in such a way okay so what happens at the first uh, rendering the component is mounted the function is called we register a state and we initialize it with the default value we register the effect and we don't execute it and then we return the jsx that currently depends on the on the false value of the component it contains stop okay now the component is just mounted uh, and so it will run the the effect once what does this effect does well actually it said that after the effect has been run i'm setting a callback to set uh, the gate to close after 500 milliseconds It will do nothing because the gate is already closed so after half a second the gate will close again if the user done, doesn't click anything on the first 500 millisecond this effect will just change the state update the state to the same values before and everything will, that component doesn't need doesn't even need to be rendered again so uh, it runs the effect and we execute the timeout the set timeout the timeout doesn't do anything right now, but it will schedule something 500 milliseconds later. When the timeout expires, we run the callback of the timeout and we set uh, open to false. The state doesn't change, everything is finished. After a while, the user clicks on the button here. Uh, click on the button, we'll execute the callback, set open to true. Okay, a state has changed, so React needs to re-render the component. It will render the component again, running the function, especially the return statement here, where this time open is true and will show go. So, uh, the, the callback is called uh, and set open true is executed and the stain becomes true the component renders again and jsx returns go this is normal rendering now let's go to the commit phase uh, something changed St open is now is true where before it was false so we can we should run all the effects uh, that depends on open and in particular this one so we are executing the code of this effect again, which will set another timeout. Because the state changed from false to true. And we are setting the timeout. And that's over. The commit phase is over because we executed this code. Uh, if the user clicks again here, 
nothing happens because the state will be set to true it's already true and if the state doesn't change the effect is not called again so the user can click when, when the button is go can the user can click many times but nothing will happen the, the effect will not be called after the timeout expires this code is run and the set opening is uh, called to false the state will become false this component is rendered again and uh, uh, this time with false it will display stop again and so the gate is closed after 500 milliseconds uh, we have a, a small bug here that when we close the gate after the timeout state needs to change and the change in the state will execute the timeout again once more will trigger the timeout once more okay because it becomes from it go, goes from true to false and it will schedule another set open to false of after 500 so actually it's not a good idea no, to do that probably we should put a if here if state is true then set the, the timeout uh, for making it false after 500 if state is already false don't do anything don't set any timeout no? that would be a better choice it would be a better choice because if we didn't have this timeout and we don't have this if uh, we are creating an infinite loop because whenever it's true, it becomes false. Whenever it's false, it becomes true, and so on. And it's, it will change crazily. Hmm? And React cannot, can never stop. Okay, the, the, the rendering sequence and the application will be blocked. Hmm? Okay, uh, and there are a set of uh, special cases uh, about the dependency arrays. Uh, about uh, arrays and uh, and uh, other stuff uh, um, I, I, we, I will comment arrays after uh, first of all i want to um, show how the effects uh, match uh, with the apis huh? well uh, in the in our exam component uh, well we most of, mostly already know what to do we should create an effect uh, that will load uh, the list of exams uh, in the initial rendering of the main application okay so inside uh, uh, that code I can do it uh, once so let's uh, go back to our so to our code no? that we had before we know that we need to call the read exams that will return a list of exams we know that we cannot use the load data function which was a, a bad patch so let's remove it from our code and this means also that the uh, at the first render of my application I cannot have I cannot initialize the state to anything to anything meaningful the loading of the um, of the exams uh, can only be done with a fetch a fetch is a side effect a side effect only runs in the commit phase which means sorry in the render uh, in the commit phase yes which means after the render phase this means that the first render phase may not may not depend on the result of a fetch it's never executed before so we should in initialize our state to something that does not depend on the fetch okay let's put it empty we initialize our application with an empty state with an empty list and then we try as soon as possible to fill this list with uh, some values, the real values. Okay. And we can do that only 
with an effect where we use uh, the callback for loading let's the the state at the beginning so we are doing something like uh, a callback to be executed only the first time so we can use the trick of putting an empty dependency list so that this callback will be executed only the first time maybe for, for the moment okay then of course we need to reload the list uh, even when we are adding something where we are deleting something so there will be other moments uh, in which we need uh, to load but for the moment uh, we just need to replace the initial loading okay so that can be done only once at the application startup what do we put here so here we have the code that will be executed at initial mount time And this is the main component, is up. So it's only mounted once. Okay, then we will see what happens if we have effects inside the nested components. That would be another complication. We are starting really from the simple case. One rendering from the top component. Hmm? Uh, what we should do? Load asynchronously. Asynchronously. Well. I think uh, from the fetch from the API the current example and then set the state to this list hmm? this is what we should do once setting the state will automatically re-trigger a rendering of the component and everything will be nice Uh, so we should do an API uh, read exams that get the list and then set set uh, exams with this list. Well, not really, because read exams is an asynchronous function that returns a promise. It doesn't return the list. Oh, yeah. So read exams dot then list set exams list. This is better. So, first commit will render an empty table. And we should be careful that our code doesn't crash on an empty table when the length of the list is zero. Right now we didn't have, um, for example, when we are computing uh, this average, okay, <laughs> we are dividing by zero here. What you're saying is, well, the list is never empty. Well, it, it will be for a very short time. Hmm? So we, we should be careful because we are rendering with initial, once, at least once with the initial state, which is empty. Okay? We'll see tricks for, for managing that. Okay? Ba basically, the component, in a way, should know when its data is ready and when its data is still loading. So we, have a, we may have a, a state uh, loading or not loading from which we can decide uh, what to show or which operation. But that's will for, it's for later. But we are sure that for the first time the rendering code, so all the functions, is, is executed with an empty state. 
and uh, will uh, render some wrong value for the exam average uh, and okay and will pass uh, an empty list here to the exam table so let's hope that exam table behaves correctly when the list is empty and so on okay and then we should run this hook uh, that we expect it to be able to run the fetch the the server with course configured is already is still active here in this window good and uh, when the get returns uh, it will get the list parameter and use it for setting the exam list and then it will crash probably let's see save something went wrong so let's try again let's reload the application did you see the flash we have two problems here one is the application flash once when it rendered with the empty uh, with the empty content and we had a not a number average here okay like okay that's something that we can fix immediately after the if we check the network we saw that we did the get call to exams and the get was successful 200 okay good we have the data and then something wrong happened uh, but it's a very stupid uh, problem props.exam.data.format is not a function remember the date was a DJS object and here we are recovering an object from uh, uh, the JSON that only is a string as a date so we must reconstruct the object uh, in our API to contain the actual date okay so we can do that we know how to do that uh, we can do that uh, in the API. I think it's better that the read exams uh, doesn't return just a JSON, but will uh, convert this list uh, to the actual list uh, of exam objects. And we already have the exams uh, constructor that is already able to convert uh, the date to, to, to date JS. So we can, where is, where is in the API, oh, not up, API, <laughs> after I get the JSON, I modify the list uh, by returning a new map, so I'm mapping each element of the list with a, a real exam object. With all the parameters, e dot uh, code, e dot name, e dot cfu, e dot score, e dot date. No, I can't do that because it's const. Uh, so uh, list exams exam. So I get a row object from JSON and I reconstruct this object uh, by if, if I need it okay in this case I, I need it so I the whole application expects to have a list of exam objects not a list of row objects so I need to reconstruct them it has nothing to do with fetch it's just uh, so if I save this I go back to the browser let's reload it again and we see a much longer list of exams which is, which are the ones that were in the database in the server okay and also the text exam that we just uh, um, added with a post in the hour before
okay so um, again this is flashing so we if you see for a moment we see uh, not a number here and then the, and just disappears after the first rendering if the API call would be slower we would notice it more okay in this case it's very it's quite fast so it's just a flash it may be uh, annoying uh, it may be not nice to see but it doesn't really the important thing is that the application doesn't crash when you get in bulk data in this case it's just division by zero and JavaScript thinks that the division by zero is not so big an issue it doesn't even issue uh, an exception for that okay I say okay the result is none instead of uh, throwing a, 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 num a number ex a numerical exception or something like that so we are partially safe here hmm? uh, Okay, so this is the first uh, type of integration that we have here. We may, uh, I, I want to make uh, still a couple of points. One is to how to handle the transitional time. Okay, and the other is, uh, maybe you ask, you may have to ask yourself, why did you use then instead of await? Hmm? Uh, it would be easier no, to write await instead of having the then and so on. The reason is that uh, uh, this function, this callback, cannot be async. You say, why not? Well, it's uh, the use effect uh, that requires that. I don't know whether, sorry. It's not in the slides. Yeah, here, it's here. We, we didn't see it yet. Um, there's a strange behavior or use effect. Uh, we saw that an effect is always run um, after the first rendering, after, at mount time. An effect may be run after some step changes. We still didn't have in the code, but we understood. And what about the unmounting of the component? Uh, in many cases, you don't need to do anything special when you unmount a component. But in, there are some cases where maybe the component, imagine you, know, uh, you have a chat component, okay? And uh, for having this chat uh, executing in real time, you have uh, to keep open a connection, maybe a WebSocket connection uh, to a server, to a chat server, okay? That, so that it, it will update. So we are opening a you know, connection to database local or to a, a, a remote server and so on. And you, when this chat component disappears, you need to remove this connection, to close this connection, to free up this connection, okay? To free up the resources that you took. So you need to have some cleanup code in some special cases when the component is over, mm -hmm. when the component is about to be unmounted, just the moment before it's destroyed. And this can be done by defining a cleanup function. And the ugly thing is uh, how you define this cleanup function. The cleanup function will be the return value of the effect callback. These are real crazy people. So you have an effect which is called whenever you need it. This effect uh, usually does something and doesn't need to return anything okay this function here doesn't have a return statement returns undefined if you want you could return a function this function will be stored and will be executed when the component if and when the component is unmounted i think it's a very stupid api I would prefer, I've preferred an extra parameter, a third parameter, okay, a function to be called mount time, a function to be called out of date, and another at cleanup. They, do, they didn't do that, okay? So if, we, if you need uh, to define a cleanup function, maybe even saying goodbye, you need to have a, a return statement to this callback. Okay, and this return should be a function. Uh, it's also bad because this function is being created every time the callback is called. Because maybe it's never called, 
but every time you execute this code, this expression, this uh, function cleanup and so on, it creates a new function object and then it forgets it. So it's also not very efficient. But anyway, what this means for us, that probably we'll never need the cleanup function, what it needs for us is that this callback must return a function. Therefore, it cannot be an async function because uh, async will return a promise. Any async function returns a promise. And this is inconsistent with the uh, user fact that they expect this function to return undefined, so return nothing, or return a function. Since we cannot define this function as async, we cannot use await inside the function. But there's, also a way, there's always a way, sorry. There's always a way. And the way is to define a function inside the user effect and call this function, and this can be asynchronous. It's better to write the code than to explain it. So I want to write the same code with, with await because it's cleaner, because it's easier. But we know that this function, so user effect, uh, callback that cannot be a sync empty dependency this function cannot be a sync so I cannot use await no problem I can define a function here load and make this function a sync And uh, in the body of this function, I would say that the list uh, is uh, await const list is await with exams. And then set exams to the list. It's easier because it's sequentially written instead of nested. And now the only thing I have to do is to call this function. And I don't return anything from the callback itself. No function is returning anything here, by the way. I couldn't return anything. Because this load function, if it would return anything, it would be a promise. Because there's a thing. And they, they don't know what to do with a promise here. Okay, so it's stupid. It's, it may look strange code at the first sight, but it's for this very, you know, hidden reason. We can put a sync, a sync here, so we create an, an. Okay, I use it with the with the function keyword, but you can also use the arrow syntax as you prefer. You define a function and call it immediately. Somebody is also using a very uh, uh, short syntax like, like this. I define a function. With a body, something. Okay. And uh, this function, sorry, a sync. Uh, function, arrow, function. That does something, okay. And call this function immediately. And this contains uh, the body, no? You see, I'm creating an async function object uh, that does something and uh, this, I don't, I don't even give it a name or store it into a variable. I just call it immediately. I, of course, I don't like it because it's not so readable, okay? Just in case you, you find some, some crazy person that li likes to, to save 10 keystrokes uh, to make something more difficult to understand. Yep? In this case, the load function will be executing or not? Will be executing or not? Uh, so, uh, so let's forget this one, okay? Just yeah. thinking about the first one. The load function is, is being called. But this is not a, a 
it returns a promise. No, it doesn't return anything, the log function. So when, okay, uh, this function is execute, so uh, this is just defining a function. It doesn't do anything right now. I define a function log. Then I call this function. Okay, this function basically calls read exams and blocks on the await, wait for the promise to be resolved. I have no return statement here, but even if I had the return statement, uh, uh, the important part is that I don't uh, wait on that return statement uh, from the external callback, because this cannot, if this would return something, whatever, this return value will be available here as a promise. So actually, I should use then, like I did before. Yeah, uh, the await is only used uh, uh, as a then, as an alternative to writing then. So first, the promise is executed. It may be resolved or rejected. When it's resolved, you may you want to use the result or not. And so if you want to use the result, you put the then or the await to extract it. But the execution of the function is just in the function call. So the function doesn't know or doesn't care whether you are reading the result or not. Right? Await is not part of the call. It's part of the extracting the result. That happens after the, 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 the execution is complete. So this, uh, I, I don't like this code. Uh, you saw, sometimes you, you see it like it's called uh, uh, so, uh, immediately. No, it's uh, it's called the uh, uh, immediately executed function expression. I don't remember the second D what it means. But okay, let's try to be more readable, okay? So that's the trick that we have to, re to resort to uh, if we want to use a wait. We have to add one more line of code and call this extra function, okay? It may seem strange when you read the code because actually it's only, it's only for, that, for that reason. Okay. Um, the second point I wanted to make uh, very easily, very quickly, is uh, how what to do for managing this uh, flashing of the application. Well, the solution is quite easy. We just define a state uh, loading. And we can initialize it to true. So the component will start uh, in a loading state. It knows that it's still loading. And we will make it no more, no more loading, no more loading. So let's say completed after we set the exam list. Set loading false. So in parallel, we are executing, updating the list and uh, uh, updating the state. All the state updates will after, up happen after the commit phase, and so it will be at the same time. There is no risk that the list is updated in the state with not uh, until the next uh, update cycle. And so at this point, uh, we have a Boolean value that we could use to control everything. For example, if loading, I'm doing very, something very crude here, loading, uh, return, Wait. And so it will, or rendering something. It, well, I had this wait uh, no, happening, flashing, but at least I'm not trying to render something that I don't need. So right now, okay, it's something very, very bad and very crude, but we could, for example, disable uh, um, uh, the page or show an image and you know, on a spinner image or anything that lets the user understand that this interface is not complete yet. And we are sure that the asynchronous effect will set the loading to false as soon as the data is available 
and then we can render everything. So maybe we can, this is very crude, I disable the whole application. Or maybe I could render something else uh, except the exam table, so I can only put a, um, a conditional here, say, okay, I render the exam table if the loading is finished, otherwise I'm rendering some placeholder or something like that. And there's a lot of websites, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, that start with an empty page uh, with a flashing image that looks like the post uh, in gray, and then afterwards uh, they load the real page, okay? So there's a mechanism that we just handle in this way with a simple state variable. Okay. That's for the easy part, uh, because we are just re uh, reading at the initial state. Next week, uh, we are, mm, let's say, looking at the complex part, so the update of the state. Hmm? Okay, I think uh, we, we are over. Thank you for today, and see you next week. Next week. Hmm?